Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Today, I'm looking forward to introducing Karen Donaldson, who is a massage therapist from Restore Flow. She specializes in abdominal, sacral massage, women's health, and gut health. She combines skills taken from various modalities, including Heather's Gentling Way and Contact Care, to restore flow to the body in areas of gut health, menstrual health, pelvic floor dysfunction, um, or pelvic dysfunction, back pain, and other impact injuries. I will let Karen tell you more about that. So without further ado, Welcome, Karen. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I've done a little bit of an intro, but it's always best to explain things and describe what you do yourself. So can you tell us more about how you got into becoming a a massage therapist and your journey to get to where you are at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of my journey has been spent um, with my own lack of flows, <laughs> um, particularly gut health and just some unfortunate falls um, onto my lower back, uh, which mm-hmm. sort of meant, uh, which I didn't realize, but that meant um, overly tight pelvic floor, um, menstrual pain. Um, yeah, like a lot, whenever there's an injury to the sacrum, it has quite a reverberating effect yes. um, on other structures. Um, but of course, whilst I had all these symptoms, I, I didn't really put it down to, you know, oh, maybe it had something to do with anxiety in my childhood because I started first. And then, you know, as I had the injuries, I didn't, again, think, or maybe like my period pain has something to do with the fact that I, my back is always sore. Um, but I spent quite a bit of time, like even as a, a young person, as a teenager, like trying to read about health. Because um, every time I went to a GP, I just got the standard, you're fine, you're healthy, either it's all in your head or so that means there's nothing we can really do. Um, yeah, which is quite disempowering. Um, so I, I went, well, I can't just live like this doing nothing because I'm uncomfortable every day. Mm. So hence I just started, you know, trying to, trying to learn things. Um, but I had no idea that I would actually start um, a practice or help other people. It was, it was more about just how can I live better for myself? Um, I ended up doing six years of psychology, so I achieved my master's, um, came out of that, still not sure where I actually wanted to take that or what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I took a a job doing research, um, which turns out I didn't enjoy and burnt out. And I think it was that experience that where I finally went... I really want to do something I'm passionate about people. And for the interim, I actually started a small catering business, just um, doing whole foods for retreats. Um, And because of my own research, my own diet, like I can easily do dairy free, gluten free, like that was what I enjoyed because I could come up with creative recipes um, that people loved. So it was actually through the food I had um, Heather Bruce contact me and ask if I could um, do the catering, um, what she called her living ligaments retreat. So that's where she's teaching everyone the basics of abdominal massage and sacral massage. And that was over in Brisbane. So um, so I, I went and I, I did the cooking, but over the course of those few days, I sat in on what they were doing and it just really clicked with me and I realized, yeah, I, I guess I just started asking the question, what if I could, um, yeah, use my knowledge to help people and what if I could use to 
yeah, help people heal their bodies. Um, Fabulous. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating when you go to the doctors and because they are general practitioners, they don't know everything. And a lot of the times they just push a pill on you and go, here, take this, call me in the morning, see what it's like. Mm. And yeah, I know from my own journeys with endometriosis, it's always been try, try going on the pill, try this painkiller, try this painkiller until you've got the highest dose possible and it's still not touching the sides. Mm. And yeah, which is why I've started this to help everyone find what they need through non-conventional means. Um, now you mentioned, you touched on Heather Bruce. Can you tell me more about what that, what her methods are, what the gentling way is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's her compilation of several different techniques. Um, the main ones being um, our Vigo abdominal massage therapy um, and a little bit of Mercia therapy. And they both, they're two modalities that focus on basically women's health, um, menstrual and uterine health. Um, but Heather is kind of combined both um, but from a very, very, well, as the name suggests, a very, very gentle perspective. So understanding that even if you are just going over the surface of the skin, you're impacting on the fascia just below and the lymphatic system, which is your body's detox pathways. So if you start to clear those things, then you start to make a difference and you didn't even didn't even get serious and, and deep, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the abdominal thing. It, it includes um, a lot of gentle womb realignment, um, as well as releasing the breathing diaphragm. So even doing upper belly work will release the pelvic floor um, and give you more connection to your pelvic floor. Um, as well as also, you know, unblocking and correcting what's going on in the lower belly. Um, and so with all that, the abdominal work, um, even the Vigo and the Mercia, they do work on the sacrum and hips. And Heather has incorporated rolfing, which is a, um, a modality from Ida Rolf. Um, who was right. a massage therapist from way back. Um, I saw that I, on your website. I thought it was a spelling error. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's pretty, it's a weird word. Um, every time I write it down on, on Word, it, it tells me I'm wrong. Um, yeah, and, and rolfing is literally, kind of as it sounds, it's a, it's a rolling movement. And you, you're picking up a, a layer of skin to roll smoothly. And like... I'll do that over the upper back and shoulders. So, um, yeah, al along with uh, doing the belly work, um, she also, or Heather also um, incorporates work on the back, as do, um, I'm pretty sure, any abdominal modality that is um, caring for the uterus, they also work on sacrum and hips. Um, and so Heather has incorporated that work, but also added roll thing. Um, which is, is literally a, a rolling technique um, where you, right. yeah, you aim to um, pick up the layer of skin um, and just roll it smoothly, which like when it, if you're super tight, um, which often means that there's layers under the skin that are bunched up or you've got um, knots in the muscles. So even rolling that layer of skin will kind of tap into that stuckness, if you will. Um, and it can often feel a little bit like um, ripping, which if that is right. happening for a client, I ask them to let me know because I never, the aim for any of my sessions is not torture because yeah. if you have people in pain, you'll just like re-injure them. Like the body will just take yeah. that fight or flight response. So anyway, I, I digress. Um, so yeah, rolfing upper back and also the sacrum. Um, sacrum, mm. 
along the yeah along the sides of the sacrum um, yeah and then also looking at um, how aligned the hips and lumbar spine that's because like if your pelvis is um, facing a certain direction often the organs will also be mimicking that so like yes they'd be stretched or shifted yeah. wouldn't they yeah 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 I mean you could have the opposite as well where your hips could be going one way and then the uterus like the ligaments could be pulling in the other direction so the uterus could be like Haha, you know I'm oh wow pelvis. yeah um but yeah usually it seems to yeah go in alignment with whatever misalignment is happening in the pelvis so um with Heather's method, it's just detecting whether like one hip is more posterior or anterior than the other, or like, sorry, more to the back, more to the front. Yeah. Um, and then whether your lumbar spine is, again, more to the back, more to the front. And often like if you're, you have a lumbar curve that goes like that, then the pelvic curve will go like that to kind of, you know, like a zigzag to, so that the body That's can fascinating. rebalance itself. Um, although I try not to assume, like if I sense that one particular hip is higher and then I go and check the lumbar, even though I know probably it's going to be the opposite side that is, that's going up, but still mm. check. Because sometimes people are just completely one way or the other. Yeah. Right. I'm sitting here twisting my hips going, ooh, how am I? <laughs> as, as you're describing, I'm like tilting my pelvis. <laughs> and I wanted to go back to... Um, what you said about the diaphragm, because mm. in my work, I teach how breathing is connected to the pelvic floor and how everything is linked like a big cylinder with the right. diaphragm included, but not, yeah. it's amazing. It's not something that people think about. So what is it that you do to help release the diaphragm so people can breathe better? Um, it's basically, starting off very gently is getting your fingers just under the ribs and just going in motion. In fact, people can do it on themselves. Um, I don't know, I could stand up and demonstrate if you like. Yeah, go for it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> have a bit of show and tell. Show and tell. Um, I probably shouldn't have worn a patterned shirt, but anyway. That's so right. You find like kind of where your solar plexus is and it's best to start on the left side because um, that's where like your lymphatic system kind of tracks to the left because you've got your spleen, yeah, your spleen as a lymphatic organ anyway. So just, just good practice, start on the left. Mm -hmm. um, and start gently, like literally just go at the level of the skin and you're just tracking down real slow, better to do it probably under clothes with a bit of oil but yeah, yeah just follow that rib down do that a few times follow the other one down do that a few times um and maybe just go one layer deeper if it feels good if it doesn't feel good don't do it because some some people like we're not used to touching our abdomen and we're not used mm -hmm. to, to those sensations so for some people they go deeper they may feel a little bit nauseous um so that's not uh -huh. what you want to do you want to Keep it to where you feel comfortable. Mm. Um, and another one you can do is downward strokes from your solar plexus to the navel. One, two, three. And then on each side. So you're kind of getting, getting in just a little bit, just getting like a little bit of pressure under the diaphragm, but not much. And then just letting it track down. That's very interesting. Yeah. There you go. And anything to help free up lungs and breathing going into flu season is always good. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Good to look at as well. Yeah. So that was the gentling way. Hmm. What about contact care? What is that? Is that quite different or is that similar vein? Um, it's similar in that it's helping the body restore flow. <laughs> um, but Oh, but a very different technique. So whereas Heather's, Heather's um, gentling way is massage based, it's using oil, you know, um, often it's skin on skin. There's a little bit of stretching and manipulating, but it's, yeah, it, it's, okay, it's still massage based. But contact care, they work entirely with the skeletal system. Right. And um, 
the, the basis of, of contact care is that when you have an impact injury, like, you know, you have a fall, you get concussed, whatever, that the force created from that impact with the ground or with whatever surface you collided in, um, some of that force gets dispelled into that surface, but also some of it um, hits, goes right through your soft tissue and into the bone. Because, right, like a shock wave. Yeah, like a shock wave. Um, and usually in these situations, your body hasn't had time to prepare itself because it's, it's a surprise mm. impact. Yeah. So it just hits the bone. And then your bone has a skin layer, which is a long word beginning with P. And if I was awesome, I would remember it, but I don't. So please forgive me, every, anyone who does contact care who is listening to this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anyway, that, that layer on the bone, it kind of twists and holds in that, that impact. Right. Um, so you've kind of got this force or um, heaviness or weight stuck in your bone that your body then has to like and some of the surrounding bones will have to take that um, whatever job that bone was doing that it's no longer doing as well because it's um, yeah then the other bones and tissues have to take up the slack right so you end up because obviously most of us have a lot of these um, situations where the bone is holding in shock um, they call it a flinch lock because, you know, your body's kind of flinched and then locked in the, the impact. Right. Um, and because we all have a lot of them, it means that our posture changes in response to those flinch locks. Even, I um, don't know how to make this sound like it makes sense. So even sometimes the function of your internal organs. So if, say, if a, like, say, I don't know, maybe my hip bone has developed a flinch lock because I fell down the stairs. Um, yeah. And you know, from, from that hip bone, you've got like ligaments to the uterus. And um, so that new position that my body has found itself in and that weight it's now carrying means that that ligament is being tightened and tightened and tightened. So the uterus is being pulled off to one side so then mm -hmm. I start to get more painful periods because my uterus is really struggling to contract and empty out the lining every month. It's just right. an example. Yeah. That, yeah. This is blowing my mind. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Good times, yeah. I'm loving these chats. It's great. <laughs> it's great. Um, so... I think I'll skip a couple of questions and carry on about menstrual health. So how, I think we've probably covered most things to do with menstrual health, but what sort of things does this treat when you're realigning the uterus or working out those ligaments, any tight bits? Is yeah. it, does it help with painful cramps that could be associated with endometriosis, for example, or is it more, yeah. Um, normal period? I would say to an extent, yes, it would help to alleviate some of the symptoms of endometriosis. Um, it'd be up to the individual of how much, because with endometriosis, you've got like, you know, extra tissue that's mm. been forming. And sometimes you've got, um, maybe some of that tissue or your uterus gets um, stuck to some other organ or some other bit of yeah. fascia or connective tissue that can create quite a, quite a net. Um, so perhaps it would take longer, but certainly yeah. like if you've got endometriosis and also your uterus is kind of stuck, because like the uterus can move, it moves on like even a full bladder or a full rectum or whatever but if it gets yeah. stuck somewhere like like too far backwards too far off to one side then that will make your endometriosis worse because mm. it's cutting off circulation it'll be impinging on different structures so by correcting that position and by helping your uterus have more mobility that will support the menstrual cycle yeah, um, because it just makes things easier. It puts it back into its optimal position to do what it needs to do. 
Yeah, I suppose it's like um, almost like scar tissue release, I guess, because it's adhesions mm. of all those extra tissues mm. that are building up and getting things a bit stuck or glued to the bladder or rectum or mm. is it in yeah. is it rectal uterine pouch the pouch, the old pouch of douglas whatever it's called now yeah gets yeah. stuck back there and yeah. so it's just about releasing things over time to help mm. for movement because yeah. you're still going to have extra bleeding and extra this that's associated yeah. with it but it's helping yeah. assist what it can do yeah yeah exactly yeah. Mm. so moving on to um scar tissue if say somebody say if i referred somebody who had a c-section mm. and things are feeling a bit stuck or they're feeling a bit tight in one spot is there massage therapy that could work to say release some tension through the layers because it goes through so many layers mm -hmm. doesn't it a c-section yeah. incision yeah tell me a bit more about that yeah um yeah short answer yes um, <laughs> i i would work with that um i would uh one self-care practice i'd encourage the person to do would be the use of a castor oil pack um castor oil is like a very old remedy um, but using it like a pack, um, there's lots of ways to do it, like wool wadding from Spotlight. Um, yeah. yeah they, um, probably a, a thinner brand. You just kind of rub some castor oil on your belly, put that wool thing over it, and then mm -hmm. have maybe some old clothing over that or a towel, and then add a hot water bottle. And so the heat and the oil helps your skin and help soften those adhesions um, so that's great to do like maybe three times a week um, in conjunction with seeing me because often it's like weird or painful to have that scar moved around like you know some scars just have a lot of odd sensation attached to them so that's where I yeah. say start using castor oil we'll do the other abdominal work you know for a few weeks first and then we'll go back to the scar and see how it is um, but if, if it feels fine, then I would just start, um, yeah, start doing massage around it and start, um, yeah, moving the skin. Yeah. Yeah. So is this, um, I'm assuming this is after everything is fully healed. Yeah. Does, um, is there a timeline on how, how late you can work on a scar? So say if somebody has a baby who's my age. Mm -hmm. And so now they're in their 60s and they have a scar that they never really thought about. This is probably going extreme end. But mm -hmm. is there something that could be done on, say, a 30, 40 year old scar as opposed to yeah. a three month old scar? Yeah, definitely. I would say it's never too late and better to do something than nothing. Yeah. Um, and they might they might be really surprised, like sometimes you might not notice that it's pulling or it's changing your posture or something, but if you start to get that released, you know, and the difference it might make, mm. even with just a little bit of, of the scar giving way. Yeah. Something is better than not trying. Yeah. 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 That's, that's my motto with everything. Something's better yeah. than nothing. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, going back to my Final question before we, we close. Um, you mentioned on your website that you really like to work with gut health. Mm. Um, what is it about gut health that you're so passionate about and what do you do with your, with your clients that you work with? Yeah, um, I think firstly that abdominal massage is so great for constipation. Mm. Um, so it's, it's really satisfying seeing those results like people coming for a few weeks and then all of a sudden things are easier um that's lovely um but i think perhaps also it's just one of the things that i've had to learn about um and yeah i i think it's because then i can encourage people to listen to their bodies and like i can give them a whole range of options i mean 
often people will have a thing that they always recommend to people like you need to eat more fiber or you need yeah. to just do this or hold your tongue a certain way or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, whereas having kind of been around the block with so many of these different um, schools of thought, I can go and look, there's this, there's this, there's this. You know, I have an inkling this might help you, mm. but listen to your body, find out. Um, and I don't know, giving people confidence that they can kind of find, find their own little bit of healing. Yeah, that's it. It's about giving people permission mm. that yeah. they don't have to rely on going straight to a doctor, mm. but getting in touch with yourself, knowing what's right and what's wrong for you, pushing when you do need to go and see, yeah. seek medical yeah. help. But um, knowing what you can do yourself to help things along and yeah. not just relying on pills and potions. Mm. Yeah. It's really, really valuable. And if we could all do that more, not that I'm saying never go to the doctor, but if we can all do that more and just mm -hmm. keep in touch with our own body and our own innate knowledge of ourselves, because we're our own expert, mm. then that's the world would be a better place, I think. <laughs> yeah get on my you. get on my soapbox but um yeah so so currently during this interview we're in lockdown but hopefully by the time this goes live we'll be out of lockdown and we can see people and people can book appointments with you um whereabouts are you based and how do people go about booking an appointment with you and can they do anything over the phone as well mm, um uh, where am I? I am uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I am um, sorry, Monday, what was that? Uh, Northcote, Northcote. Uh, on Ewa Road, Northcote. Yeah, that's all right. It broke up a little bit. I thought I better. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, and Mondays and Fridays um, and Wednesdays by request, I I have a little uh, room in Snell's Beach. Perfect. And do people book through your websites? Yep, um, through the website under appointments. Um, or if you, if there isn't a time that suits, I'm happy for people to email. I, or I'm happy for people to email anyway because I can book them in as well. So email or via website is fine. Yes. Um, I was having a look at your website earlier, and I noticed on the appointment section there was a, I don't know what I want section. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that something that they book in and have maybe a chat on the phone first or do they come, still come and see you and it's a bit longer in appointments? Um, when I originally did it, I just sort of went, well, it's probably good to have, it, have an option so that people are not familiar yeah. with certain terminology or whatever, they can just come. Um, yeah, but I, I think definitely having a chat on the phone be great just to you know so that I know like what I'm doing when I get there but at the same time I, I go with the flow so if they just turn up and we have a wee chat then I'll you know it'll be fine yeah fabulous so it's all about just getting to know the individual and then working yeah. to that yeah. yeah perfect well that's all the questions I had is there anything that you would like to add that I may have missed um yeah oh I realized, so I explained contact care, but I didn't sort of give much indication of what the modality is or feels like, or okay, yep. I wonder if I should go back and yes, yeah, yeah, clarify that. Okay. Um, basically to say that again, it's, it's working on the skeletal system. So like I would go in and check bones, different bones, and I'd be looking for rigidity or heaviness. Um, and then it's a pressure technique and it should not be painful. The pressure should feel good. So I, um, I always check in with people, ask, is that comfortable? Can you make yourself more comfortable? Because sometimes it actually really helps if the client moves into it or, or moves right. away or adjusts their body to, to their own comfort. Um, cause if your body is completely comfortable, um, then that shock will release much easier. Which I suppose wow. makes sense because if you're all uptight and scared, then your body's going to hold on to things for dear life. It is. So is it kind of like an acupressure type? 
Um, it, it probably looks like it, uh, but it's not using uh, like mapped out points. It's okay. finding on that person's body what feels like a flinch lock. Yeah. Mm. Right. Fabulous. Yeah. Just thinking, does that kind of link with um, like myofascial release? Does it get down to, because obviously you've got the fascia and the, the mm. muscle tissue, tissue over the top, does that play a part? Um, I, I would say indirectly. Okay. So once you release the bone, then the connective tissue attached can then relax and kind so of go oh. back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So without having to get in there and actually manually change the connective tissue, it's, mm -hmm. it, yeah, that happens via a chain reaction. Perfect. Yeah. Because everything is linked. Mm. Everything yeah. is linked. It's like if you stubbed your toe or you broke your toe, all of a sudden your shoulder can hurt because you're walking funny and everything's gone up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's looking at the cause, not the symptom. Mm. Yep. Mm. Very good. Well, that is the end of our time today. But I do have one more thing. Um, if you could summarize what we've talked about. Um, and if there's one thing that you'd like the women listening to the podcast to take away, what would that be? Mm. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, just be empowered to find your own healing. Um, and what I like, my aim, what I do is to just support the body's own wisdom. Um, yeah, I, I suppose that's what, what I would say with that. Yeah. 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 We definitely align there. Because that's it. You, you are the own, your own act of your body. You know your body best. Mm. And by, and we're there to assist that and mm. by you. Yeah. I guess create the optimal conditions for your mm. body to thrive or, yes. or change track. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, that is it. Thank you very much for joining me. You're most welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.